first of all, just like to thank you for giving me a privilege to testify about God's love and amazing grace towards us. And to him be all the glory. You glad to be in God's house today? That's good. You might still be here by the evening service. But uh, no, there's many people and they can have doubts or questions about God. But when you witness a life being brought from darkness in the light and from chaos in the order and from drunkenness in the sobriety because of what God has done, you can't argue with that. And there's a verse in God's word. And it's Philippians 4 verse 13 and states, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And I can honestly say that's the only reason that I can stand here today sober and of sound mind because what Jesus done at the cross, not just for me, but for everyone in here. And if you're in a place today where you feel the walls are closing in or you've nowhere to turn, I just want to tell you that there's a way, a hope and a future. And that is in Jesus Christ. That's what I discovered on the 1st of May 2011 when I repented of my sins and accepted Jesus as my Lord and Saviour. This happened in a Christian residential unit belonging to Storis. And uh, I'd just like to share a bit of background, just how and why I ended up there. Before Jesus saved me, I had made a lot of bad choices in my life. And ultimately, with well, that came bad consequences. But I was born and raised in a wee uh, village in County Down called Money Ray. Nobody ever cheers for that because no one's ever from there. <laughs> but uh, I was uh, from a financially stable home. And to be honest, I didn't, I didn't want for anything. Grew up in Sunday school, boys brigade. I have many fond memories of them times in my life. And I've no doubt in my mind that that's where many seeds were planted when God's goodness and love were sown into my life. As a family... Uh, when I was younger, we'd, we'd always nice breaks away and stuff, and um, there was never a time where there wasn't plenty of grub on the table. But uh, there was always alcohol consumed in the family home, and uh, on many occasions, just th that, that's the way it was, and, and that's what was done, and it was just portrayed as normal way of life for me. I remember going to pubs with my family all over Ireland when I was younger, and I thought it was good, harmless fun, and Especially, I got to beat all the adults at pool, bit of a pool short. But uh, at the age of 13, a major life-changing event took place in my life. And uh, it was an experience that I enjoyed. And to be honest, I couldn't wait to do it again. And that event was my first participation of consuming, getting drunk and alcohol. And that was uh, the start of my weekend pattern of consuming alcohol. I was able to keep under my mum and dad's radar. Um, because they had been drinking as well, and they, they wouldn't have noticed, or else in many occasions it just would have stayed in a friend's house and not come home. But even at that young age, as soon as I took a drink, I wouldn't stop until I got drunk. And that was uh, the start of a 17-year drinking spree that would bring me to a point where I didn't know where to turn. I'm, I'm an all-or-nothing sort of person, and I just thank the Lord that I'm on all for Jesus kind of person now. At the age of 14, um, I started dating my future wife-to-be, Laura, who's here with us today. And uh, Laura lived just around the corner from me. And I know God's hand was upon me end for her to take a rocket like me on. But uh, it's confirmation that the old saying is true, love is blind. But Laura was a, a Christian girl. And uh, I think it was safe to say that I was a complete opposite. Even though Laura um, never got into the whole drinking culture, it, I still ultimately wasn't a good influence on her for a Christian walk and started to create some distance between her and God. And it says in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers, for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness? And looking back, um, Laura should never have thought about dating me, I would have said. Um, people will say that the Bible is just a bunch of rules and regulations, but not at all. I see a verse there, it's just a prime example of God's love for us and uh, how he wants to protect and guard our hearts and minds. And God's not in the business of uh, dictatorship. He's given us free will to choose the way we want to live our lives. But as I got older, definitely not wiser, <laughs> may I say, I began to personally notice that alcohol um, was a major issue in our home. At the age of 16, my parents married at 28 years, 
um, broke down and they separated. I found that extremely difficult, caught up in the middle of their divorce, and I would say I was probably a definitive moment where my drinking really started to spiral out of control. Um, I just want to add at this point, I've never met anybody in life whose ambition was to set out to become an alcoholic. Drugs and alcohol, they're, they're, often, used, they're often used recreationally or, or as a coping mechanism just to escape, to block out the pain um, rather than dealing with it. But before that person realises, they've become addicted to a substance. When I became dependent on alcohol, everyone close to me could see it, but I was in complete denial. Even though all this was going on, um, I, I still managed to achieve good GCSE results in school. Successful um, in getting an apprenticeship with Northern Ireland Electricity, and I've now been employed by them for 19 years. And I had a reputation for being a good worker, but I, w I worked long hours, so I like to play hard too, and uh, I felt I deserved that. But during my career wi with NNI, and when I look back now, I've absolutely no doubt God's hand was upon me, and I kept my job. Um, due to my dependency on alcohol, I, I had a major safety incident in work, and I was suspended for two weeks without pay. I was given a three-year final written warning, and my high-voltage switching authorisation was taken off me and I was given a desk job, so it was quite serious. But uh, I was also placed in the NIE's drug and alcohol program um, when I finally admitted to myself and, and to them that I had a problem with alcohol. God was even in control then when I didn't know it. Laura and I, we, we started dating in 1994. Um, it's 22 long, hard years, no, I'm only joking. But, uh, we got married at, at 21 and with three handsome young men who's with us this morning. There's Roy said, Mark 15, Reese is 13 and we Bailey's 8. Um, Laura married me thinking she could change me or even fix me. But uh, she prayed for me and she tried her best to hold our wee family together. And I can't emphasize enough, um, never marry someone thinking you can change them. There's only one person who can change your life and that's Jesus Christ. To say uh, my marriage and my family life was a bit shaky from the start is an understatement. And things only got worse as time went on. Laura experienced postnatal depression with all three of our boys. And I tried to support her, but drink always took a priority. Um, I had a friends at our house four nights a week. Many a night I would have went out with them and not come home. And when, when our youngest boy, Bailey, when he was just three weeks old, um, I lost my driving license due to drink driving. And uh, me and Laura were, were growing apart at a rapid rate. She was turning to God again, and I was turning to drink. Many occasions during our marriage were uh, Laura gave me chance after chance to sort myself out. And even though um, I would never admit it, I knew the alcohol abuse was putting a major strain on my life and my family's life as a whole. Deep down, um, I really wanted to change. But the longest period that I'd went without drinking, um, from the age of 13 till I was 30, was five weeks. Um, that was to prove to Laura and her pastor that I wasn't addicted. So after that, I was straight at it again. But alcohol, it, it had got such a grip off me, and uh, getting off it just seemed impossible. Unfortunately, in July 2010, due to many things that I won't have time to mention today, um, Laura finally and understandably uh, had enough of my behaviour and she gave me an ultimatum. She says, listen, me and the boys are to drink and to my shame and disgrace, I chose drink over my family. And I moved out to live with my dad in Ballygown and the next year was probably the worst year of my life. Um, Laura and I had been separated for six months now and she had witnessed just how ill I was getting and noticed how much I was neglecting seeing the boys. Um, she moved out of uh, our family home then, and she went and lived and rented accommodation with the boys in the hope that getting me back to the family home and away from the bar and that environment I was in would maybe stabilize me a bit, but that wasn't the case. When I got home, um, Laura was in a rented house and my drinking continued to be daily. I'd got to a point where I'd contemplated suicide on many occasions. Um, in January 2011, my alcohol addiction 
now led me to taking six months off work. Not glorifying what I'm about to say by any means, but uh, just trying to give you an indication of just where I was and how much I was drinking. Um, on average, I was consuming about six litres of cider, 24 tins of beer, and a couple of bottles of Buckfast every day. Um, to be honest, going by in figures, you know I'd say I'm fortunate to be still here the day. But after, after several altercations between Laura and me, um, she finally filed for divorce. Social services were now involved with the family, and I wasn't able to see a boys without supervision. I'd been asked by social services to get mental health assessments carried out, to attend the AA community addictions team, and they told me that I required um, a community psychiatric nurse to help me. Of course, I told them I had no mental health problems and I wasn't an alcoholic, that uh, I just liked to drink. Even at that stage, I was still saying it wasn't a problem. It was at this point my brother had phoned me and he asked would I ever consider going into Ballyard's Castle, which was a Christian residential unit run by Storis. Um, that's where my brother had gave his life to the Lord and was set free from alcohol addiction seven years previous. It was all I could think about over the next few days and uh, I came to the conclusion that I needed help. And that's when I contacted Roy. And I moved into my brother's house in for support because I had to be substance free for 10 days before I went up to there. Um, so you, you have no idea, see the fear I had inside. I, I couldn't comprehend living a life without alcohol. And I had no idea what I'd do with myself at the weekends, how I was going to make friends. I just I didn't know because I'd never functioned without it. Um, but I arrived at Ballyard's Castle in May 2011. And to be honest, all I actually really wanted to do was just go and get a wee break off the drink. But I think the Lord had all plans for me. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. The moment I set foot in Ballyards, I could feel there was something different about the place. And it wasn't long before that I realised it was just the presence of God residing there. And all the staff had a lovely way about them. And I, it was just the, the Lord working in them and through them. And see, when I seen that, it, I was attracted to it. I wanted a piece of it. On, on the morning of the 15th of May, 2011, Roy was speaking from God's word. The room full of broken residents. Paul, my friend, he's, he's with me today. It was there with me. And uh, one way or other, th these guys had all just been receiving the end of the struggles and worries that this world throws at you. And I felt like I was the only person in the room. And I knew the Holy Spirit was speaking straight into my heart and bringing me to a place of deep conviction. And uh, it was at that moment I realized it wasn't just the alcohol addiction that I needed dealt with but it was actually all the sin in my life. And after the morning de devotion, I asked Roy if I could speak to him in private. And I followed him in the away room and I, I just said to him, I said, I need the Lord in my life. I knew I was rotten in the inside and without Jesus Christ, it would never change. In John 10, 10, God's word says, the thief, that's the devil, comes only to steal, kill and destroy. And I, that's Jesus, came that they may have life and have it abundantly. There and then, Roy led me in prayer, and uh, I repented of my sin, and accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour. There was no flashing lights or anything like that, but immediately I felt the large burden had been lifted off my shoulders, and I just knew the Lord had done something and saved me. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, God's word says, Therefore, if anyone, that's anyone, is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. And through a price that was paid on the cross, this allowed the transaction to take place between me and God. There's no other way to deal with sin other than acceptance and repentance of sin through Christ Jesus. No amount of good works, going to church, positive thinking, money or charity can save you. It's only that relationship with Jesus. And I stayed in Storis for another four weeks, and I can honestly say it was an extremely precious time in my life. Things were amazing at the start, and I was able to cope and deal with things on a different level that I had never experienced before. Laura had actually been dating a guy for over six months when I had went into Storis, and uh, I'd really struggled with this. 
However, I now began to pray daily, just that God would restore our marriage. Six months on, Laura was still dating a, a guy, and uh, I'd started to take my focus off of Lord. Then I, I got involved with a woman, and uh, I was thinking, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And that just, I, I enabled the enemy to get in and get a foothold. One evening, I ended up then slipping, having a drink. And to be honest, it scared the life out of me. But I think it's like Peter when he stepped out of a boat. Once we take our eyes off the Lord, we'll just sink quickly. It's so easy to lose focus. I contacted the pastor of my church that night. Um, we had a couple of minutes. Um, two carloads of men pulled up outside the house. And about eight of them jumped out with Bibles in their hand. Normally it's other things have in their hand in this country. But uh, it was my own hit Christian hit squad. And they came into the house and they removed their main and drink that I had. And they prayed with me. And uh, their love and concern for me is something I will never, ever forget. So I dusted myself off and I got back on track with the Lord. Pushed into them in a way that I had never done before. And God has worked many families in my life. And my family. It's just been amazing. After continued prayer, I discovered that Laura's solicitor um, had actually misplaced her divorce file. And it had stalled proceedings for three months. And during that time... Laura had actually been on her own journey with God and she wrote me a letter and asked, could we give things an hour go? Praise the Lord, answered prayer. And in May 2012, nearly exactly a year after the day I got saved, um, Laura gave her life back to Jesus and just started walking with God again. And God started restoring our marriage with help of Christian marriage counsellors. Lovely couple, Jack and Helen, we're now great friends with them. It's, it's such a blessing. Over a period of six months, they helped us deal with a lot of issues. Stuff from the past, stuff that had went on during our separation. And many of them Tuesday evenings, we were near divorced again. But um, I'm just so thankful to God that he gave us the strength to, to work through everything together. But most of all, to come out the other side stronger with Jesus at the centre of our marriage. In April 2013, um, Laura and the boys moved back into the family home. And uh, that was answered prayer again. And we're just, we're so totally blessed, Laura and I, that all our boys have um, now know and love Jesus. Um, I had the privilege of baptizing my eldest son, Mark. Um, and when I had asked him why at 12 years old he wanted to get baptized, he says, Dad, look what God's done in our family. How could I not obey him? Praise the Lord. And my dad, he's also stopped drinking and is now saved. The God's just moving right throughout the family. And... Uh, Three years ago, the Lord led me to get involved uh, as a volunteer with Teen Challenge. It's an organization that supports people with drug, alcohol, life control and issues. And it was such a privilege to serve and support others from a similar background as my own. And Laura and I, we also began to open the door of our house on a Thursday evening, just to anyone who wanted to hear about God. And Thursday Night Club, we call it, has grew to be a real blessing in our lives. And we get the worship and talk about God alongside brothers and sisters. And people who don't know Jesus come along and get to hear how our God is still in the business of transforming lives today. Just recently, the Lord made a way and called not just me, but my wife, Laura, as well, to volunteer for Storis. And it's been on our hearts for years. And uh, we just had to wait patiently on the Lord to put things into place and pave the way for us. And God brought it to pass in his perfect timing. And we're both so excited just to see what the Lord has in store for us as a family through his precious ministry. And just like this, uh, thank you for having me here today. I'd just like to encourage you by telling you that we serve a God that is still in the business of doing miracles and transforming lives today. And if you need help or support with, with any sort of life control and issues and at all, speak to me, speak to Roy to Pamela, anybody here today and uh, if you're here today and you haven't yet give your life to the Lord maybe this is the day he's calling you giving you an opportunity to make a definitive life-changing decision that will give you a purpose a hope and a future and don't put it off any longer accept Christ and just like to finish by with my baptism first and Joshua 1 verse 9 I hold on this dearly have I not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. All the glory be to God. Amen. Thank you.